Hello. In this part of the guide, we're going to discuss SVG animation techniques. Scalable Vector Graphics is a format for describing 2D graphics with support for interactivity and animation. We're going to be taking a look at these three approaches. We're going to use JavaScript to adjust SVG attribute values. We're also going to use CSS to adjust SVG elements and their styling using the CSS approaches that we learned earlier in the guide. And then finally, we'll take a look at SVG animation elements, which are part of synchronized multimedia integration language. And the first approach is the only one that is supported in all major modern browsers. The last two approaches are ones that are not yet supported by Microsoft browsers. And before we get started, here is a link to the SVG specifications, where you can learn complete and free about SVG 1.1, 1.2, and 2. And also there's a link here for the changes from SVG 1 to SVG 2. So here we have a very simple SVG element that renders the container with a border around it. Now inside we can put a rectangle element and now set its attributes to their defaults. X equals 0, Y equals 0, width, let's make that 50, the height, Let's also make that 50. And then the fill will make red. So now we should have a red box that's 50 by 50 sitting in the upper left hand corner. Now for our example, to have JavaScript easily identify and target this element, I'm going to give an ID equal to rect1. Then we'll put in our script element, close it off. And the first variable we'll create is the rect1 object reference. So that's equal to document dot get element by ID and the ID is rec one. Then we're going to define a variable for the request animation frame ID. So we'll call it rec ID for short. And in that line we can also define an X variable and make its default zero. Now we'll type in function animate. And the first thing we'll do inside of the function is X plus plus to increment the value of x by 1 each time the animate function runs, which this animate function is going to be running around 60 frames per second. Then we want to target rect1 and use the set attribute method. The attribute name that we want to affect is the x attribute of rect1, and then the value is going to be the dynamic x value that's being incremented here. And then to make this function animate, or loop over itself, we set the request ID to window dot request animation frame animate. This method will make this animate function keep firing off at a rate of something around 60 frames per second. Now at this point the animate function is not being called to run so we're going to use that same line the request ID for the request animation frame and call animate. So this line will just execute once and then this line will make the animate function execute over and over and over. So inside of our function we're having JavaScript dynamically set the attribute of the X attribute up here and give it any value that we want over time. So let's take a look at what that gives us. So we have the red box now animating across the screen on the X plane, the horizontal axis. We can preview that in Internet Explorer just to make sure it's working there also. Because not all animation approaches will work in Internet Explorer, but this is one that will certainly work. But we have different attributes that we could target. We could target the Y axis, its vertical positioning. We have width and height. Those are all animatable. And SVG elements can also have a transform property or attribute. So let's say in the transform attribute, I put the rotate 45 degrees. Let's see what that gives us. And now the rectangle is rotated 45 degrees. And there it is in Internet Explorer. And to have it not come out, you can set overflow to hidden for your SVG element. Because in Internet Explorer, the box will show outside of the SVG container. So you just hit overflow hidden and you'll see the box disappear. And then in Chrome it it has that behavior by default. 
So I can remove overflow hidden from the SVG container and in Chrome it won't show outside the boundaries of the SVG box. But in Internet Explorer you can see it outside the boundaries of the SVG box. So that's why I had overflow hidden there. Now what you can do is target this transform set attribute for the transform attribute and you can dynamically change its rotation over time and transform attribute comes with all kind of functions that you can call such as skew rotate translate scale and things like that which can all be found at the specifications that I linked you guys to now there's also another way that we can target certain attributes and adjust their base value so I can take these two lines the X plus plus and the set attribute method and replace it with this one line which reads rect one dot X attribute dot base value dot value plus equals one so basically that's saying X plus plus on the base value of the X property or the X attribute that's just like saying plus plus so we should have the same speed when we look at this yep and then you can change that to a 2 which will make it go a little bit faster and you think you can just plus plus that as well if you want it to increment by 1 each time yeah so that's like saying x plus plus but you're doing it on the actual base value of the X attribute for the rectangle. Let's see if we can adjust all of this to animate the rotate function in the transform attribute. So the attribute name that I want to affect would be transform and then between single quotes we'll put rotate function and we'll put the dynamic and then instead of having a dynamic X we're gonna have a dynamic D for that would stand for um, degrees rotation degrees and we'll just plus plus those we don't need this line anymore and then dynamically set the rotate by putting in single quote single quote and then plus plus and then between the plus signs we'll put the D variable it's basically just concatenating that D variable to that string the rotate function string that way we can have a dynamic value there okay so you can see it's rotating but it's leaving the view of our box so let's put those back on zero X and Y and then we can adjust the view box let's put it at zero zero and 400 by 200 was our view box actually let's put that over here now we should have the same view box now let's adjust these values let's give it a let's say negative 100 there see what that does See how it moved it over 100 pixels this way to the right. Now let's give it negative 100 for the minimum Y. And now it's rotating 100 pixels by 100 pixels on the X and Y plane into the SVG element. So that's how you can animate SVG elements using JavaScript to target certain attributes and adjust their values to make an animation. So in this example, I wrote a little application that creates an analog clock. And it's not really finished, but it's something you can put in the rest of the numbers for and other graphics to finish it. You can see how the second hand goes along with the time in an animated fashion. And we're using the same set attribute, transform, rotate. To make all of those clock hands move according to what time it is. So I'll offer this code that you can study. Or you can also finish up the clock if you want. To put in the rest of the numbers and use any graphics that you want for it. And what's nice is that this also works in Internet Explorer. in all major modern browsers. Now the next animation approach for SVG that we'll take a look at is CSS adjusting 
the style properties for SVG elements, which unfortunately it's not supported by Microsoft browsers yet. Wah, 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 wah. So let's take this SVG container. And this one has a circle element inside of it. And we gave it a class of flash circle because that's how we're going to target it through CSS and animate it. It has an X position 50%, Y position 50%, radius is 50, and we have a fill and a stroke color set. Let's see what that gives us. View that in Internet Explorer also. And we get the graphics. Now I'm going to put in some CSS above that. And this is CSS that we've learned earlier in the guide. A keyframes animation. And first what we're doing here is just targeting the SVG element itself. We're giving it a border width and height. That's just the SVG container. Then we have a keyframes animation called Flasher. And that changes the fill and the stroke and the stroke width of the flash circle. And the keyframe animation settings are set right here on the flash circle class. Here we have flash circle class. And here we have the class flash circle targeting in CSS. We have the animation property set here for flasher. The keyframes animation flasher to run at a 1.5 second interval in a linear fashion infinitely. And you can see we're going from the normal fill color and stroke color here to a different fill and stroke color and stroke width back to the original stroke color and fill color. So let's see what that renders. And there's our flashing circle. Now if we check that in Internet Explorer we get no animation. And you can use CSS to animate your SVG elements in much the same way that you would animate any of your other HTML elements. But it's just not very well supported in Microsoft browsers. And this example I wrote uses CSS transitions. When you click the menu button, it opens up into more options or it opens up the menu's options and then the menu button itself changes to a smaller version of it with an X in the middle. That way it can be closed, opened and closed. Cool little animated menu system that you don't see very often. And You can see we have the transition property set for the ellipse elements. We're using the uh, transform CSS properties on all of those ellipses and that's what's making the animation happen. You can see down here we're using transform style property. So that's CSS. And I'll also give you the code for this application as well. This one shows how to add some interactivity to those elements that are animated on the screen. Where interactivity is what causes the animation to occur. The last approach for SVG animation that we'll be taking a look at is SVG animation elements. And remember, I gave you guys links to the SVG specifications, which house all of the documentation that you need to learn about the animation elements and all of the SVG elements themselves. They're under the animation section there, which can be found inside of the SVG 1.1 specification. We're going to start with an example where we have an SVG container, and inside of it we have an ellipse. Let's take a look at that. Now I'm simply going to apply the animation element inside of the ellipse, nested inside of the ellipse. This animation element has attributes that are going to let us establish what type of animation we want. We set the attribute name to CX. We're going to affect the CX attribute of this ellipse from 50, which is its default. CX is 50. So we're going to go from 50 to 250X over a duration of three seconds with a repeat count of indefinite. You can put one, two, whatever number you want there, or indefinite if you want it to keep repeating. Then we'll have it begin at zero seconds, which is like a delay. If you want to set a, a one second delay, you can put one second there. So let's see what we get. It goes from 50 to 250 and then repeats indefinitely. In this next example, we're going to demonstrate the animate transform element, which this is all completely documented at the links that I gave you. 
Okay, we have a rectangle in the corner of a box. Now inside of that rectangle, we're going to put an animate transform element. Now I just separated the properties or the attributes by line so you can see exactly what's going on. So we have an animate transform element. The attribute name is transform. That's the attribute that we want to affect. Begin zero seconds, that's our delay. Duration, three seconds. The type of transform is translate. We're gonna transform from position 0x, 0y to position 200x, 200y. Repeat count indefinite. In this final example, we're gonna demonstrate how to animate on a motion path. So let's take a look at what we're starting with. It's just a path that's a rectangle sitting inside of its SVG container. Now right above that, we're gonna put in the motion path. This is the motion path that this path is going to follow. Now attribute D that you see right here that holds all of these coordinates that establish the motion path, this is your path data attribute which you can research this at the documentation that I linked you guys to in the beginning. So basically I set up the coordinates, the move to, and these curves to make an egg shape. So let's see what that gives us. So there's the egg shape motion path. Now I want to take this rectangle and animate it along this motion path, sort of like if it was a train going on a track. So in order to do that, within this path, nested in this path that we want the animation to occur on, we're gonna put an animate motion element. This has a duration of six seconds. The repeat count is gonna be indefinite, so it'll keep going over and over and over. Then nested inside of the animate motion element, we have a motion path element, referring to the motion path one ID here. So this is the path that this path will follow. Let's see what we get. And there it goes. And this path could be any shape or line setup that you want. So that's the SVG animation approaches. And don't forget the documentation where you can learn really in depth about SVG complete and for free at your own pace. Here are a couple of playlists that are related to this video. And you can subscribe to the channel if you'd like to get notifications when I produce new videos.